Namaste. India is a beautiful country and is different from the rest of the world. The most important factor that makes it different from the rest of the world is definitely the ownership of Vedas. We are the descendants of rishis, the scholars, par excellence, who gave to the entire world Vedas which are eternal and are the ultimate source of knowledge. And definitely the scientific knowledge it contains makes India different from the rest of the world. First of all, I will give you the meaning of Veda. The word Veda comes from the root sound with, which means to know or to understand. It's a verb and you should know a verb is something that indicates activity and with is a word that refers to the activity of knowing. This is the root sound from which words like Vidya, which means learning, Vidyalaya, a place of learning, Vidwan, a learned man, and Vidushi, a learned woman, comes from. So the literal meaning of word Veda is knowledge. But knowledge of what? Knowledge of everything in existence and that is why Vedas are considered as ultimate source of knowledge. I will come to it later how it contains knowledge of everything that exists. But first of all, let me ask you how many of you have seen the Vedas? Every Indian, whether in metro or in the remotest village, knows the word Veda, but very few of us have seen it as it is not very easily found in our surroundings. Vedas are four in number. The first one is the Rig Ved Sahita. I have told you the meaning of Ved, but what is Rig? Rig, it means a hymn, hymn of praise. Praise, praise of what? Praise that comes out of a human being in the state of ecstasy, in wonder, in knowing, in an interaction with a lot of mysteries. And Sahita, Sahita is anthology, which means collection of poems or musical compositions. These books are great for numerous reasons and how important they are for Indian history can be understood from the fact that whenever you want to study Indian history, it opens with Vedic age. It's a matter of wonder that how in those days human beings started thinking in such an organized manner. They were just animals. They started walking, they started agriculture and suddenly they became so intelligent that they discovered the mysteries, the wonders of not only the physical world we are living in, but also other worlds, which was definitely possible through tremendous meditation. And they reached to the level of articulation where they could communicate, not only just communicate with each other, but communicate in such a poetic manner and in the poetic manner of highest standard par excellence. These all books were written or I should say composed as the art of writing came much later in a language that was so developed, so rich, so scientific. I don't think I need to tell you in these days how scientific Sanskrit language is. And this language reached its highest form at the time when these Vedas were composed. Each poem is written in a metric style and is singable. That means in these Vedas, means when these Vedas were composed, Sanskrit language became so scientific that varieties of metrical forms were there in existence. You know, what is a meter? Right? A meter refers to the composition of poetry in which there are measurements of each line which may depend on the number of syllables uh, means akshar or matra in a verse or which may be defined from the stress it puts or at various places. Sometimes it goes high and comes down and sometimes it starts slowly and goes up. 
right? So th- there were various meters. And I have been talking about the highest level of excellence in which poetry can be written is seen in the Vedas. We can discuss what is the level of poetry uh, in the Vedas, but let me ask you: Can can anyone of you recall a verse from any of these Vedas? I will recite for you one which is most common, and every Indian must have recited or heard or seen it somewhere, and that is. the very famous the sacred gayatri mantra now gayatri mantra 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 means a verse means a mantra gayatri mantra is a verse and gayatri mantra means a verse written on the gayatri chand as i was talking about the meter right so gayatri mantra is called gayatri mantra because it is it is written on the gayatri chand and this chand is known as meter and there were various meters which were prevalent when the vedas were composed and gayatri is just one of them right so and you know each meter had a particular structure that how many syllables will be there how many verses will be there what will be the flow of those verses where the stress will be given and that is how so many meters were used and gayatri mantra there is not only one gayatri mantra now you can understand in the vedas there are various gayatri mantras associated with individual gods and goddesses because gayatri mantra is a mantra that has been written on the gayatri chand gayatri meter so i was talking about the most famous verse that you must have heard and you all must have heard about the gayatri mantra and that is om purbhuva swaha tat savitur varenyam hargo devasya dhimahi dhiyo yonah prachodaya what is the meaning of gayatri here gay means something that is melodious and tri means three so you will see three lines in each gayatri mantra right three steps or three rhythms in it and i was talking about the ultimate knowledge that is there in all the vedas so what kind of knowledge they were talking about they are talking about not only this physical world we are living in they are talking about the world in which this physical world lives and then about the world in which that another physical world lives we know of the earth and then we know of the solar system and then we know of the galaxy and then we know of that there are many galaxies but you'll be surprised to understand that this was all known to those people who have given us this gift of vedas so in this famous verse they are talking about only three words the physical world the antariksh the space in which this physical world is there and the world above it and they knew about another many words like the word above that and above that and above that and then you like some seven such kind of words and the most highest one was satya so in this verse they are talking about three words so it starts with om om is par brahm i'll discuss the meaning of om later because om you can see is a word it is comprised of three words o e m so just try to pronounce all three words and see from where it comes o e m so it starts from within from the navel and comes up to the mouth so from entire body from entire existence you are calling the par brahm then it is bhu o bhu Now, who? What is this? Who? It is who? Who me? Which we are living on the physical world. Om Bhur Bhuah. Next is Bhuah. So, what is this Bhuah? This Bhuah is the antariksh, the space where this physical world exists. And then comes Swah. Swah is the swarglo, the heaven, which is above the antariksh, above the space. So, Bhur. Bhuva Swaha. They are talking about the three words here: the physical world, the antariksh, and swargalok. Now, tat savitur varinya. Tat, tat is that. 
that supreme soul supreme like right? and savitur savitur means of the sun god varenyam varenyam means one who is fit to be worshiped is the most blessed one in whom lies all the bones var is very important in sanskrit you must have heard of vardan right it's a womb so varenyam is one who is fit to be worshiped is the most blessed one then bhargo bhargo is light light that remove darkness the luster devasya of god dhimahi means we are meditating dhiyo dhi is buddhi the intellect dhiyo yo is which nah dhiyo nah nah is are prachodayat prachodayat means may be driven or directed or guided towards what towards the par brahma who is the supreme god now when we were talking about the meter of the gayatri mant the chand this gayatri mant the gayatri chand always has 24 letters and you can see this gayatri mant also has 24 letters as tat sa ri tu va re ni ya har go de vasya bhi mahi thi yo yo na prachodaya right now if you want to put it that there should be eight words in each line we can put it like that gayatri chand is considered the most sacred of all meters in sanskrit grammar and is called the mother of all chandas one fourth of the rigveda is written in gayatri chand so when i was talking that the vedas are the ultimate source of knowledge we have just discussed one verse of veda which is talking about three worlds which is talking about some such energy which is so powerful which illuminates the entire world so if you read all the thousands of verses in the vedas you'll come to know what kind of wisdom and knowledge is there in the vedas and why it is known as the ultimate source of knowledge truly has been said vedas are the ultimate source of knowledge i want to discuss the oldest of the any surviving texts in the entire world the rigveda rigveda is an ancient collection of vedic sanskrit hymns and is the oldest of four sacred vedas the philological and linguistic evidence indicates that the bulk of the rigveda sahita was composed in the northwestern region of the indian subcontinent most likely between 1500 to 1200 bce although a wider approximation of 1700 bce to 1100 bce has also been given the codification of the rigveda took place late in the rigvedic or rather in the early post rigvedic period at around 1200 bce by members of the early kul tribe and the initial collection took place after the bharat victory in the battle of the 10 kings under the sudas over the other kul kings vedas are composed by poets of different clans including famous vedic rishis such as vishwamitra and vashisht all together the rigveda consists of the sahita the brahmanas the aranyaks and the upanishads now what is the meaning of this rigveda sahita word vid which means knowledge from it has derived words like vidya vidya peet vidyalaya vidushi vidwan so veda means knowledge and it's a verb the verb denotes an action so what does it denote it's an it's an action of knowing and rig rig means praise praise of what praise of mysteries praise of wonders and sahita sahita is the collection of poetic versions it is the core text which is divided into 10 mandals or you can say 10 books and has 1028 hymns 
and has 10,000 and approximately 600 verses. In the eight wonders, that is from two to nine, which were composed the earliest, the hymns predominantly discuss cosmology and praise deities. The ninth mandal is entirely dedicated to song and song ritual. The younger mandals, one and ten, means which were composed later. They in part also deal with virtues such as truthful speech, truthful action, self-discipline and righteousness, significance of charity, and of generosity between human beings, and how helping someone in need is ultimately. in the self interest of the helper its importance to an individual and to the society the philosophical and speculative questions have also been asked which illustrate the metaphysical nature of the contents like what is the ultimate limit of the earth what is the center of the universe what is the ultimate source of human speech who gave blood soul spirit to the earth how could the unstructured universe give origin to this structured world in the 10th mandal also discusses the usage of approximately 125 medicines it discusses healing through water healing through air healing through sun healing through mantras healing through havans and that is why the upveda ayurveda is associated with rigveda There is no evidence of any elaborate, pervasive, or structured caste system. There was division of labor and complementary relationship between kings and poet priests, but no discussion of relative status of social classes. Women in Rig Veda appears as speakers in dialogue hymns, both as mystical or divine Indrani, Apsaras, Urvashi, or Yami. as well as apala atre godha gosha lok mudra the women of rigveda are quite outspoken and appear very confident elaborate and aesthetic hymns on wedding suggest rites of passage had developed during the rigvedic period there is no evidence of dowry or of sati in it or in the related vedic texts the rigvedic hymns mention rice and porridge however there is no discussion of rice cultivation the term ayas metal occurs in the rigveda but it is unclear which metal it was iron is not mentioned in rigveda the linguistic sharing provide clear indications that the people who spoke rigvedic sanskrit already knew and interacted with munda and dravidian speakers the mandals 2 to 7 are associated with specific regions and mention prominent bharat and guru kings the hymns of rigveda are in different poetic meters in vedic sanskrit so uh, there are various kinds of meters used in rigveda the gayatri mantra which is very famous is found in the rigveda and also the mahamrityunjay mantra is found in the rigveda the vedas as a whole are classed as shruti which simply means that vedas were composed and preserved by oral tradition as the art of writing came much later they are memorized and verbally transmitted with unparalleled fidelity across generations for many centuries it was probably first written down about the 3rd century bce the manuscripts were made from birch bark or palm leaves which decompose and therefore were routinely copied over the generations to help preserve the text there are around 30 manuscripts of rigveda at the bhandarkar oriental research institute collected in the 19th century they are in the sharada and devanagari scripts written on birch bark and paper the oldest of the pune collection is dated to um, 1464 contemporary era the 30 manuscripts of rigveda preserved at the bhandarkar oriental research institute pune were added to unesco's memory of the world register in 2007 
Rigveda manuscripts in paper, palm leaves and birch bark form either in full or in portions have been discovered in various Indus scripts like Devanagari, Granth, Malayalam, Nandinagari and Sharda. The various Rigveda manuscripts discovered so far show some differences. Broadly, the most studied Saka recension has 1017 hymns, includes an appendix of 11 hymns which are often counted with the 8th mandal for a total of 1028 metrical hymns. The Rig Veda is the largest of the four Vedas and many of its verses appear in the other Vedas. 1875 verses of Rig Veda are found in Sam Veda. 1,350 verses of Rig Veda are found in Athar Veda. 1,875 ritual focus verses of Yajur Veda also are borrowed and are built upon the foundation of verses in Rig Veda. The Rig Veda or other Vedas do not anywhere assert that they are Aparushe. Aparushe means not made by the human beings. And this reverential term appears only centuries after the end of the Vedic period in the texts of the Mimansa school of Hindu philosophy. The Rig Vedic hymns are dedicated to various deities, chief of whom are Indra, Agni the sacrificial fire, the Som, the Adityas, or Asur gods Mitra, Varun, and Ushas the dawn. Also, we see the invocation of Savitri, Vishnu, Rudra, Bhushan, Brahaspati, as well as defined natural phenomena such as Deospita, the shining sky, Father Heaven, Prithvi, the earth, Surya, the sun god, Vayu, the wind, many rivers, notably the Sapta Sindhu and the Saraswati River, and the Devi Soup, which highlights the goddess tradition of Hinduism is also found in Rig Veda. Madhavacharya, a Hindu philosopher of the 13th century, provided a commentary of the first 40 hymns of Rig Veda in his book Rig Bhashya. In the 14th century, Sayan wrote an exhaustive commentary on the complete text of Rig Veda in his book Rig Veda Sahita. This book was translated from Sanskrit to English by Max Muller in the year 1856. The birch bark from which Max Muller translated is available in the Pandarpur Oriental Research Institute in Pune. Rig Veda Sahita has been translated into many other languages like in Latin, English, German, Russian and French. Rightly has been said, Vedas are the ultimate source of knowledge. The Yajur Veda is an ancient collection of Sanskrit mantras and verses used in Hindu worship and rituals. It is one of the four primary scriptures of Hinduism collectively known as the Vedas. Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sam Veda and Atul Veda. The name Yajur Veda is derived from the Sanskrit roots Yajus meaning worship or sacrifice and Veda meaning knowledge. Yajur Veda may be translated as knowledge of the sacrifice. The text describes the way in which religious rituals and sacred ceremonies should be performed. The Yajur Veda is more pronouncedly a ritual Veda for it is essentially a guidebook of the Advaryu priest who had to practically all ritualistic works in a sacrifice. His works vary from the selection of a plot of the land for the sacrificial altar down to offering oblations to the sacred fire. Four major priests were assigned to these four Vedas, the Hota to the Rig Veda, the Advaryu the Yajur Veda, Udgata to the Sam Veda, and Brahman to the Atharva Veda. Each has essential ritual roles, but it is the Advaryu reciting from the Yajur Veda who functions 
as executive priest assigning sacrificial duties and mantras to the yajmanas yajman is the patron of the yajna and also prescribing duties to other priests the yajurveda is also important for its presentation of philosophical doctrines it preaches the concept of gnan and manas the yajurveda is broadly grouped into two categories the white or bright or shukla yajurveda of which about 16 recensions are known and the black or dark or krishna yajurveda which may have as many as 86 recensions most of them are lost but we have found the mention of those in the vayu purana and out of the 16 recensions of white yajurveda only two have survived into the modern times and they are madhyandena sahita and kanva sahita and the others are known only by name because they are mentioned in other texts while the term black implies the unarranged unclear motley collection of verses in yajurveda in contrast to the white which implies the well arranged clear yajurveda the black yajurveda has survived in four recensions tatrya sahita kathak sahita kapishthal sahita maitrayani sahita and each recension of yajurveda has sahita brahmanas aranyaks upanishad as the part of the text with shoshutras grahasutras and pratikshakya attached to the text the krishna yajurveda is characterized by a mixture of mantra and brahmana whereas the shukla yajurveda maintains the clear separation of the the earliest and most ancient layer of yajurveda sahita includes about 1875 verses that are distinct yet borrow and built upon the foundation of verses in rigveda the middle layer includes the shatpad brahman the shatpad brahman is one of the largest brahman texts in the vedic collection and it means shatpad shatpad means brahman of the 100 parts it includes a veritable encyclopedia of meandering opinions on ritual and other matters The youngest layer of Yajurveda text includes the largest collection of primary Upanishads, influential of various schools of Hindu philosophy, and they are the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, the Ish Upanishad, the Taittirya Upanishad, the Katha Upanishad, the Shvetaeshvatra Upanishad, and the Maitreya Upanishad. The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad is found in the White Yajurveda. it is one of the mukhya upanishads and among the largest and oldest as well it is a key scripture of hinduism that has influenced all schools of hindu philosophy the text is a treatise on atman atman means soul or self with passages on metaphysics and ethics the bridaranyak upanishad is among the earliest extensive discussions of the hindu concept of dharma kaam and moksha the ish upanishad is found in white yajurveda it is one of the shortest upanishads bhadaranya was the longest upanishad and ish upanishad is the shortest upanishad embedded as the final chapter of the shukla yajurveda a key scripture of the vedant sub schools of hinduism the ish upanishad also discusses atman that is soul self theory of hinduism and is referenced by both dwait that is dualism and advait that is non dualism sub schools of vedanta it is classified as a poetic upanishad along with kain katha upanishad and kundak upanishad the taittirya upanishad is found in black yajurveda the taittirya upanishad includes why it is known as taittirya i will come to it later right so the taittirya upanishad is found in the black yajurveda the taittirya upanishad includes verses that are partly prayers and benedictions 
partly instruction on phonetics and praxis partly advice on ethics and morals given to graduating students from ancient vedic gurukuls so the text offers a view of educational system in ancient india the katopanishad is also found in black yajurveda the upanishad is the legendary story of a little boy nachiketa the son of sage vajasruvasa who met who meets yama the indian deity of death their conversation evolves to a discussion of the nature of man knowledge self that is atman and moksha that is liberation the detailed teachings of kathopanishad have been variously interpreted as dualistic and non dualistic dwait and advait the kathopanishad found in the yajurveda is among the most widely studied upanishads shvetaeshvatar upanishad is found in black yajurveda the text opens with metaphysical questions about the primal cause of all existence its origin its end and what role if any did time nature necessity chance the spirit had as primal cause it then develops its answer concluding that the universal soul exists in every individual there is oneness a unity of souls in one and only self the maitreya upanishad is found in the black yajurveda and discuss metaphysical questions related to self the maitreya upanishad is notable for its references to theories found in buddhism uh, elements of the sankhya and yogya schools of hinduism as well as the ashram system the yajurveda had short sutras and grah sutras attached to it from 15 schools the text is useful source of information about the agriculture economic and social life during the vedic era the verses list the types of crops considered important in ancient india two of the oldest surviving manuscript copies of the shukla yajurveda sections have been discovered in nepal and western tibet and these are dated to the 12th century contemporary era the core text of the yajurveda falls within the classical mantra period of vedic sanskrit at the end of the second millennium bce younger than the rigveda and roughly contemporary with the atharva veda and the sam veda the scholarly consensus dates the bulk of the yajurveda and atharva veda hymns to the early indian iron age after 1200 and before 800 bce the various ritual mantras in the yajurveda sanhitas are typically set in a meter as we discussed in the last video in rigveda what is a meter and if you want to know more about meter please see the video the gayatri mantra the all mantras in yajurveda sanhita are typically set in a meter and call on vedic deities such as sun indra agni prajapati rudra and others the question arises why yajurveda has been divided into two parts and there is a legend about it that ved vyasa compiled the entire vedic corpus and thought it would be difficult for people in the kaliyug to understand the entire corpus in one go so he divided them into four the rigveda yajurveda samveda and atharva after ved vyasa compiled the entire vedic corpus please remember compiled the mantras were already existing so he compiled the entire vedic corpus divided them into four and taught each veda to one of his shishyas and in this course yajurveda was taught to vaishampayan vaishampayan was the first to receive the yajurveda which he taught to his shishya yajnavalkya but something went wrong between the guru and the shishya between vaishampayan and yajnavalkya and vaishampayan became angry and told yashnavalkya to return whatever was taught to him 
the entire yajurveda came out of the body of yashravalya as small pieces of burning coal vashapayan told his other shishyas to eat this embers so that is burning coal which they did assuming the forms of tether tether is a bird right that is how i was telling that it is known as tether sanhita so each shishya consumed some part of veda and then when they reproduced the portions they had consumed it was reproduced in the form of various portions various kandas or known as sections there are seven such kandas in krishna yajurveda or the black yajurveda but they all were mixed up the mantra bhag and the brahman bhag got completely mixed up now yajnavalkya did a lot of tapasya and requested sun god to systematically arrange them and looking at this tapasya sun god himself systematically arranged it and this portion which was now systematically arranged is known as shukla yajurveda now this sahita is also known as vasani sahita why it is known as vajasne sahita because yajmalkya's father was muni vajsani that is why yajmalkya was known as vajasneya and shukla sahita composed by vajasneya is known as vajasne sahita although there is another legend about it that when yajmalkya did his tapasya and sun god came sun god came in the form of a horse known as vaji and that is why it is known as vajasne sahita there is also a upved attached to yajurveda and that is the dhanurved the sam veda sam meaning song and veda meaning knowledge is the veda of melodies and chants it is an ancient vedic sanskrit text and part of the four vedas namely rigveda yajurveda samveda and atharveda The Samveda consists of 1549 unique verses taken almost entirely from Rig Veda except for 75 verses. The largest number of verses comes from books 9 and 10 of the Rig Veda. Some of the Rig Vedic verses are repeated more than once. Including these repetitions there are a total of 1875 verses in the samveda samveda has the root of music and dance tradition of this planet the purpose of samveda was liturgical and as we have discussed in earlier videos that a priest was assigned to each veda so the singer priests assigned to samveda are known as udgatris Among the four Vedas, the Samveda is regarded as the foremost. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has declared, "Among the Vedas, I am Samveda." Veda na Samvedo asmi. Here, Indra, Agni, and Som deities are mainly invoked and praised, but most of the time, these prayers seem to be the invocations for the supreme being. thus major theme of the samveda can be regarded as worship and devotion means upasana according to the ancient tradition told by patanjali the samveda had 1000 recensions known as shakhas three recensions of samveda have survived the kothama the ranayaniya and the jaminiya as you know this veda was directly taught by vyas to his disciple jaimini while its earliest parts are believed to date from an as early as rigvedic period the existing compilation dates from the post rigvedic mantra period of vedic sanskrit between uh, circa 1200 to 1000 bce or slightly rather later roughly contemporary with the atharveda and the yajurveda the samveda is said to be the rigveda set to music the samveda text contains noted melodies and these are probably the world's oldest surviving ones 
the musical notation is written usually immediately above sometimes within the line of the sound with the text either in syllabic or a numerical form depending on the samvedik shakha in samvedik school the samveda comprises of two major parts the first part include four melody collections known as gaan and the second part include three verse books known as archic a melody in the song books corresponds to a verse in the archic books the gandha collection is subdivided again into two parts gramgeya and aranyageya gramgeya means melodies for public recitations and aranyageya means melodies for personal meditative use such as in the solitude of a forest the archic portion is also subdivided into two purvarchik and uttararchik portions the purvarchik portion of the text has single stanza verses and is organized in order of deities while uttararchik text is ordered by rituals the samveda like other vedas contains several layers of text with sahita being the oldest and the upanishads the youngest layer it contains sahita brahmana upanishad shrot sutra samved is like a musical score sheet thus the contents of the samveda represent a tradition and a creative synthesis of music sounds meaning and spirituality the portion of the first song of samveda illustrates the link and mapping of rigveda verses into a melodic chant two primary upanishads of hinduism are embedded inside the samveda the chandokya upanishad and the kain upanishad chandokya upanishad has played a historic role in the evolution of various schools of hindu philosophy it is one of the most cited texts in later bhashyas which are known as reviews and commentaries by scholars from the diverse schools of hinduism adi shankara cited chandogya upanishad 810 times in his vedant sutra bhashya the precise chronology of chandogya upanishad is uncertain but it is the youngest layer of the text in the samveda the text discusses dharma and many other topics there are three branches of dharma dharma doesn't mean here religion dharma means righteous life or duty and the three branches of dharma discussed here are yajna means sacrifice swadhyay that is self study and dan are the first tapas means austerity or meditation is the second brahmacharya for education in the house of a teacher is third the kain upanishad is much shorter but it too delves into philosophical and spiritual questions in the first paragraphs kain upanishad asserts ethical life as the foundation of self knowledge and of atma brahma in samveda we find such knowledge which came to the modern scientists very late for example it is known in the samveda that indra ne prithvi ko ghumate hue dharti par rakha hai means it indicates the theory of rotation samveda says chandra ke mandal mein surya ki kirne vilin hokar usko prakashit karti hai means moon reflects the light of the sun and also that the sun is the ultimate source of energy which gives life to water on the earth the indian classical music and dance is rooted in the sonic and musical dimensions of the samveda along with the upanishads and agams the samveda in addition to singing and chanting mentions instruments the rules and suggestions for playing various instruments form a separate compilation called as gandharva veda and this upaveda is attached to the samveda the structure and theory of chants in the samveda have inspired the organizing principle for indian classical arts and performances and this route has been widely acknowledged by musicologists 
dealing with the history of Indian music. In the Naradiya Shiksha Shastra, the singing tradition of Samveda has been mentioned, which is known in modern Hindustani and Karnatic schools as Swarkram. Sa de ga ma ba dha ni sa. It gives us knowledge of various chants that have divine effect on our body, mind, and soul according to different times of a day. For example, Rag Bhairavi is good in morning, Rag Abhogi is good if played in the evening. Traditionally, the Vedas are spoken as Trai. Trai means three because they are composed of three kinds in mantras rings or verses, yajus or prose, and salmon or chants. It is said, if Rigveda is the word, Samveda is the song. If Rigveda is the knowledge, Samveda is the realization. If Rigveda is the wife, Samveda is the husband. In the 14th kand of Atharvaveda, Atharya Brahman, Samveda and Rigveda are shown as husband and wife. Amo Ahem Asmi Satvam Arthat Main Pati Hu Aur Tum Patni Hu Amo Ahem Asmi Satvam Arthat Ahem means Main Amo Pati Asmi Hu Sa Patni Tvam Tum Hu 21 times Saman or Sa is mentioned in Rig Veda. Sage Krishna Vaibhayam divided the Vedas into four parts. These four Vedas have been well known as Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sam Veda and Athar Veda. He taught it to his four chief disciples Rig Veda to Paila, Yajur Veda to Vaishampayana, Sam Veda to Jaimini and Atharva Veda to Sumana. The Atharva Veda is the knowledge storehouse of Atharvans, the procedures for everyday life. According to the etymology of the Nirukta, Atharvan is the name given to a stable-minded person who is immovably formed, that is, a yogi. The oldest name, however, by which this Veda is known in Indian literature is Atharvangira Subeda, that is the Veda of the Atharvans and the Angiras. Angiras too were a group of schools and priests. The Atharva Veda has been called by several other names Bhrigvangirasa or Bhrigvu Vistara. Sage Bhrigvu also revealed various themes of this Veda. So this Veda was also named as Vigvangirasa or Vigvangirasa. Brahma Veda The title Brahma Veda is related to the priest Brahma, the fourth of the four priests of the group. The other three are Hota for Rig Veda, Advaryu for Yajur Veda and Urgata for Sam Veda, Bhai Sanchi Veda. This name has been derived from the subject matter of the Veda, which contains material on Bhai Sanchi, that is medicines and treatment. Akshatra Veda This name originates from the matter revealed in the Veda, which contains information about the Akshatra. Akshatra is the boreal class known as Akshatrayas. The ancient Indian tradition initially recognized only three Vedas known as Trai, Veda Trai. The acceptance of the Atharvans was slow and it was accepted as another Veda much later than the first three. The ultimate acceptance of Atharveda as the fourth Veda probably came in the second half of the first millennium BC. However, the hymns of Atharveda existed by the time Chandogya Upanishad was completed around 700 BCE but were then referred as to hymns of Atharva Angirasa. The dating of Atharva Veda is derived from the new metals and items mentioned therein. For example, uh, mentions iron known as Krishna Ayas, literally meaning black metal. And such mentions have led to the estimate that the Atharva Veda hymns 
were compiled in the early iron age at or slightly after around 1200 to 1000 BCE corresponding to the early Guru kingdom. According to Patanjali, Atharva Veda had nine recensions or shakhas but the Sahita of the Atharva Veda is today available only in two recensions, the Shonak and the Pipala. It is the Shonak Sahita that is frequently meant when the Atharva Veda is mentioned in ancient and modern literature. This Veda is divided into four Prabhatikas, divided into 18 books or Kandas and the last two were added later. It was earlier 18 and then 2 and it became 20. And each Kand is again subdivided into Suktas and these Suktas into Mantras. It is a collection of 730 hymns containing 5987 mantras and some 1200 verses are derived from the Rig Veda. Reliable mens- manuscripts of the people of the edition were believed to have been lost but a well-preserved version was discovered among a collection of palm leaf manuscripts in Odisha in 1957. The people of the edition is more ancient. Along with Sanita, layer of text, the Atharvet includes a Brahman text, three primary Upanishads. And the three primary Upanishads attached to Atharvet are Mundak Upanishad, Mandukya Upanishad, and the Prashna Upanishad. The Mundak Upanishad embedded inside Atharvaveda is a poetic style Upanishad with 64 verses written in the form of mantras. So the Mundak Upanishad is referred to as one of the Mantra Upanishads. The Mundak Upanishad is one of the texts that discuss the pantheism theory in Hindu scriptures. The text, like other Upanishads, also discusses ethics. Through cons- uh, it says that through continuous pursuit of satya, that is truthfulness, and tap, that is perseverance or austerity, and samya jnan, that is correct knowledge, and brahmacharya, one attains atman, that is self and soul. The Mandukya Upanishad is the shortest of all the Upanishads found in the Atharvaveda. The text discusses the syllable Om presents the theory of four states of consciousness, asserts the existence and nature of Atman that is soul, self. The Mandukya Upanishad is among the often cited texts of chronology and philosophical relationship between Hinduism and Buddhism. The Prashna Upanishad is from the people and school of Atharvavedins. The text contains Prashna is a question. So the text contains six prashna, uh, six questions, and each is a chapter with a discussion of answers. The first three questions are profound metaphysical questions. The fourth section, in contrast, contains substantial philosophy. The last two sections discuss the simple poem and moksha concept. The other faith includes one Brahman that is Gopat Brahman. The roots of Ayurveda, a traditional medical and healthcare practice in India, are in Hindu texts of Charak Sahita and Sushum Sahita, both of which claim that allegiance and inspiration to be the Vedas. The Atharva Veda includes Gopat Brahman text that goes with Atharva Sahita. The roots of Ayurveda, a traditional medical and healthcare practice in India, are in Hindu texts of Charan Sahita and Sushrut Sahita, both of which claim their allegiance and inspiration to be the Vedas, especially the Atharva Veda. The Atharva Veda is looked upon as the Veda of varied knowledge. It contains numerous mantras which, according to their subject matter, can be broadly divided into three categories. One, related to the cure of diseases and destruction of adverse forces. Two, related to establish peace, protection, health, wealth, friendship and longing. Third, related to the nature of supreme reality, time, 
death and immortality however there are eight topics that are covered these are bhai sachya that is for disease their cures and their causes ayushya that is for supplications for longevity postic is for worldly progress and welfare abhicharika is to destroy or harm enemies who obstruct progress prayashtit is for expiatory rights rajkarma is introducing the political system brahmanya that is the nature of brahma the absolute the bhai sarji suktas deal with diseases their causes and cures show a remarkable insight into the subject of health sciences that is why this veda is considered to be the precursor of ayurveda or the science of health and longevity sometimes ayurveda is listed as an upveda or subsidiary of atharva veda several diseases like fever leprosy jaundice diabetes skin disorders trouble of the ear nose and throat fracture of bones diseases of heart are mentioned with their respective cures apart from medicines and physical remedies use of chants and charms was also in plenty the ayush sutra contains supplications for longevity they are to be uttered on auspicious occasions like upanayan upanayan is for investiture with the sacred thread or godan gifting of the cows and so on the desire to live the full span of life that is approximately 100 years is often expressed one of the suktas indicates to wear a raksha sutra that is the thread of protection on the body to attain longevity abhicharika suktas suggest destruction of one's enemies including the lovers of one's spouse annihilation of evil spirits mesmerizing others through whom one can get one's desires fulfilled are some of the topics dealt with in these suktas the word krishnendra jal is sometimes used to indicate the type of black magic rites depicted here rajkarm suktas gives an account of the political system during those days the king was elected by the people national and social problems were discussed by or decided in a samiti a parliament of the people the raj purohit that is the chief priest of the state had an enviable place in the affairs of the state prayers for victory in war and hymns expressing devotion to the motherland given here are highly poetic and moving a very famous verse from atharva veda which we all have heard is mata bhumi putro ahm pratithya ye dharti hamari mata hai aur hum iske putra hain earth is our mother and we are her child this is a famous line from atharva veda which each indian has somewhere heard or read or recited rig veda is the veda of knowledge yajur veda is the veda of karm samu veda is the veda of bhakti and atharva veda is brahma veda and umbrella celebrating the divine presence to the disciple in his ear if you want to know more about vedas please check the entire playlist the vedic literature in which you can find the detailed discussion on all the vedas vedangas and all things related to the vedas if you have not subscribed the channel please subscribe the channel thank you